What's going on you guys, my name is Kirby Downey and welcome to another awesome video. I've noticed a lot of people have been printing out that old catapult that I made quite a few years ago. Fun fact, I actually made a second version of it for a project for SolidWorks. The second version is much easier to assemble and works a bit better and I think looks a bit better as well and prints mostly support free. The link to download version 2 will be down below in the description and on my mini factory. So, hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Yes! What's going on you guys? Welcome to another awesome video where I'll show you how to use SolidWorks and 3D printing to create something awesome like this catapult. <laughs> Return to me. So this catapult is entirely 3D printed including the springs using a simple coil. This is a very fun project and very great for creating something quick and fun for a bit of desktop warfare around the office. So let's get into how I made this awesome catapult. So obviously we start out by opening up SolidWorks. I decided to use a top-down design technique for this to create the body, all the components, so that I knew everything would put together as opposed to creating each individual part and importing them into an assembly. For me personally, this is the fastest way I get to design mechanisms and moving parts. Right now I'm busy building the little axle that will hold the actual catapult and then either side of that, that axle will, will be the each spring. I use that reference circle just to get an idea of the, the arc that the actual catapult is going to turn into and that allowed me to get the actual height of this device. To create the arc, I use the helix slash spiral uh, feature. I under defined by you can switch to from a helix to a spiral. That allowed me to create my basic sketch, which I then offset a surface from and created the coil spring. The nice thing about the, the top-down design technique is that there's a lot of figuring out as you go and not a lot needs to be changed during the design phase as opposed to changing all the individual parts by themselves. It just makes it a lot easier to create designs that you're not sure the direction that you're going to take them into. This is especially the top-down design technique of figuring out things as you go is best demonstrated in this scoop, which shows that I tried a couple of things before I got the 
the actual shape that I wanted. Put on a bunch of fillets to give it a nice smooth shape. Once I was happy with that, I then used the move feature to get the catapult in the upright position to align it to the pins in the spring. Again, some fillets just to shape it up nicely. I then used the rollback feature because I realized that the, the top bar is a little bit too high for the scoop so I needed to lower it down so I used the roll down rollback feature to fix all those problems and to fix it up and then I saved each individual part as an STL so that this can be 3d printed All the parts that you see printed here are printed in a grey Matter Hackers Pro PLA, all done on an Ultimaker 2. The spring that you can see being printed here was printed with 0% infill. This just helped out with giving it a nice uniform springiness. The pins, because they had a very small footprint on the bed I knew that some will fail hence why I printed a whole bunch of them in one go gives me more chance of having complete ones the actual body of the catapult was a simple print a little bit of support material on that um, overhang across that bridge that stops the catapult once it's catapulted when it came to assembling it was very very simple just I once I got the pins together, I used a little screwdriver or you can use any long item to actually align the pins in place where you want them. I then placed the coil springs on the catapult arm and inserted their pins. And voila, it's assembled. Used a bit of blue painter's tape, a little ball to make a little print. Boop. So, as you saw, it's a very simple project, very easy to make, and a lot of fun to play with, too. Shows a very ex good example of how you can mix a bit of, you know, the, use the same plastic in a rigid format and a flexible format. Um, shows a lot more capabilities than just solid objects. Please go ahead and like this video. Please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know the things that you would like me to make. Tell me about your day. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Battle montage. So much for watching that and a quick little reminder that i am starting a podcast with my buddy johnny harris this is called the core podcast all the links are down below and it'll be awesome if you go and check it out we'll be going live soon with our very first live video so check that out please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one